Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I have asked for Rostrum because I put a timer here uh, so that I do not exceed my time when we have leaders here. So the, the President of Amana, Saudara Masabu, the new Secretary General of the DAP, Saudara Anthony Lo. Our beloved uh, Damasara, Damasara Member of Parliament, uh, Tony Pua, Saudara Rajiv, Saudari uh, Alia Jamalia, and then Saudari Lim Yi Wei, and ladies and gentlemen, how are you? It is so good to be back. It's just like Balik Kampong here. Um, so today I come to Petaling Jaya. It, it really makes me think a lot about the old days. Um, so this is a sign of a person aging. When you think about your younger days, this is when you are already getting old. I thought about my first chirama in uh, Civic Hall, MBBJ. That was 10 years ago. That time I was single, young and slim. And an amoy. Today, I am married with two children and gained just a little bit of weight. But I remember the first time when I came here, I was talking to you and I was so nervous. Because I was so nervous as a rookie politician, I did not eat for two weeks. Did not eat well for two weeks. Today, I need a timer so that I can restrict my time so I don't exceed the time talking to you. I remember the first time when I'm here in MBBJ Hall. It was a time where we had the campaign Shabas versus Tony Poir. I don't know how many of you attended. Can I have a raise of hand? Any of you attended that time? Oh, we have. We do have people 10 years ago attended. And I want to thank you. Today, you still attend. And that time, we wanted to raise 200000 for Tony Pua. But people of Petaling Jaya helped us to raise more than 300000 for Tony Pua to pay the damages soon. And I also remember another dinner. After we lost in GE13, Everyone was despondent. Everyone think Uba is impossible. Suddenly, this Tony Po had a new idea of Impian Sarawak. Organized the first fundraising dinner in MPPJ Home. That time, nobody think that we can actually make any inroads to the rural Sabah and Sarawak. But there is one funny guy by the name of Tony Pua. He believed in it and he started Impian Sarawak. And in this hall, we again raised more than 200,000 to kickstart our Impian projects. And Tony from then on raised more than 4 million and helped many thousands of Orang Asli, Orang Asal in the most remote part of Malaysia to have basic infrastructure, water, electricity, healthcare, and education. We even had a breakthrough in the GE14. For the first time ever in the DAP history that we won rural seats in the indigenous constituency like Ternong in Sabah and Masgading in Sarawak. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, you support Tony Poa. You believed in Tony Poa in 2008. And I can tell you today, it is not in vain. And I can tell you today, you have made the right choice. So my second topic is very funny. So I told Tony Poa, today you will be surprised what I'm going to talk about. Today I want to talk about Tony Poa a little bit. I don't know why, you know. Well, sometimes uh, when you are old, you think about your younger days, I think about my teacher in politics, Tony Pua. I don't know whether you all remember, 2018, before 2018 election, Tony Pua was the figure for 1MDB. He go and analyse all the 1MDB documents that nobody can understand and put them into beautiful slides. Any of you have attended his talk on 1MDB? Can I have a raise of hand? Yeah? 
He toured around the country. Toured around the country. He even became the first MP ever being sued by a Prime Minister. Congratulations, Tony Pua. But after 2018, a lot of people asked, why Tony Pua so quiet? Ah? Why Tony Pua so quiet? A lot of people ask me, hey, where is your Sifu? He used to be very loud. He's not loud, lah. just with the mic, he's loud. Lah. He used to be very loud. Where is Tony Pua now? I can testify to you, he is not sleeping. He was not sleeping. He became the political secretary of the Minister of Finance. And unfortunately, was asked to not talk about MOF, anything regarding MOF, openly. So the Tony Pua that once seen as hero of, by the public is now seen as that quiet man after the change of government. But this Tony Pua, if I can say that I am actually quite a hardworking minister, but if I can say one person that is more hardworking than me and much more hardworking than me, it was Tony Pua. He was working behind the scene on my salam, two billion to for two hundred thousand B forty patients. When you have critical illness, you suffer from uh, you are you're being hospitalized. He was so busy again plowing through all the concession agreement that he told you can be renegotiated. LRT three, MRT two, ECRL, the highway concessions. You know what? In just short 22 months, the Minister of Finance, together with our Tony Pua, a lot of input from Tony Pua, managed to renegotiate all this concession agreement and save your money, save your children money and your grandchildren money of more than 80 billion ringgit. People of Petaling Jaya, Tony Pua was not quiet. He was busy working without being able to say a word. Without being able to be seen as hero, but he is still busy working. I always remember the day when I was very shockingly and surprisingly being appointed, uh, being selected as a minister. I remember the day I asked Tony. Tony was checking for me, da, da, da. And I remember a picture that he took after I was sworn in the first day of parliament. He took a picture of us. He said, my minister and me. Something along the line. And he was very proud that I became a minister. Today, I tell you this. Many leaders can see their machai ah, helping them. Can tahan ah, People under them, people that they brought to politics ah, as somebody uh, just lower than them, helping them to do great things. But not many leaders like Tony Pua. That she, he could genuinely be proud. I wanted the best for me as his machai. As, no, as his, not machai. Ah, as somebody that he brought to politics to be a minister. That speaks a lot about how big a heart a leader is for Tony Pua. So Tony, I know you won't like it. Uh. Tony is an extremely introvert person, if you know him personally. But today, I want to say this to you. Tony, hey, you must listen to me. You don't talk to around. <laughs> Tony, Thank you for what you have done for Malaysia. But Tony will not be able to do what he does without you, people of Petaling Jaya. Petaling Jaya is a place that built dreams. In this civic halls, we see over and over again, new dreams being born out of it. New possibility being born out of Petaling Jaya. 
in 2008, political tsunami happened. Tony Pua, Hannah Yo, and many others were swept to take on the position of Adun and MPs. That time, I was overseas. But all of you believed in them, and political tsunami happened. And that 2008 political tsunami inspired that little girl that is in a very far away land in Turkmenistan, happily earning US dollar, wanting to climb the corporate ladder, continue to earn US dollar and retire in the US. And that 2008 political tsunami inspired that little girl. That reminded the little girl the love she had for this nation. And the love she was buried under her because she was disappointed with the country. And that 2008 political tsunami that many of you made it happen inspired her to come back to Malaysia to make a change in this country. And this little girl went on to be the Adun for Damasara Utama. Later on, she went to Johor and became the member of parliament for Bakri. And later on, she was appointed and become the youngest female minister in the history of Malaysia. And in the 20 months as a minister, that little girl who was in nowhere far away did cancel six direct award independent power producers contract that just awarded in 2018 before the election and saving your money 12 billion ringgit. And that little girl saying no to foreign garbage and sent more than 100 containers back to the countries of origin. And she not only that, built the SOP so that continue, this sending back can be continued and to date, more than 250 containers full of foreign plastics waste now sent back to the country of origin. And Malaysia sound out big to the people and say, we are not your garbage dump. And that little girl introduced net energy metering 2.0 on a one-on-one -on -one offset basis that saw 20 times more uptake of solar, rooftop solar in Malaysia. And that little girl introduced STI policies that you have never heard of, but today you hear them. RISE, MOSP, NSFE, iConnect, that all of which aim and continue to survive to regime change and can use to optimize public investment in R&D for research outcome. All of these will not happen if 2008, Petaling Jaya, people of Subang Jaya and people of Klang Valley refuse to believe change can happen. So today, if there is only one message that I can only, I can send you, I can give to you and can, you can bring it home, I want you to know this, is that, you know, DAP ministers and deputy ministers, you, when we are our government, we do many things that is wrong, but there are two things that I can proudly say of the ministers and the deputy ministers of the DAP. One, none of us have ever used our position to add a single cent in our pockets. And two, we have tried all our best. I, I'm almost ending it. The last point I want to point out to you is this. I want to show you a picture. Can we show? So I have only one slide. This is a picture I took in, on, the, on the night of 9th of May. On the night of 9th of May, I took, took this picture. I took this picture when I was on the stage. It's actually already the early morning of 10th of May. Uh, 10th of uh, May. Early morning, we are already declaring victory. We were declaring victory, so they asked all the MPs to come out. I was, go 
up on the stage as well. Uh, Saudara Masabu, Saudara Anthony Long, all of them are up. Up on the stage, we were all up on the stage before Tun Mahadev was declaring victory. You know who are these people? They are the media. International media, media. These are all medias and their cameramen. I have never seen such a big crowd of just media. A lot of people take a lot of interest of what happened in Malaysia and the international media. I took a photo of them because it reminded me of this. As we declare victory, if not of what all Malaysians do before 9 of May, you know what will be the next 10 of May headline of the international media? If we did not make the historic victory, the next day media will be the corrupt regime won election in Malaysia despite scandals. Kleptocrat reigns in Malaysia. Oh, uh, let's welcome our Saudara Gobin Singh uh, for his arrival. The international media will say a lot of bad things about Malaysia. But because you believe in it, and not only you believe in it, you put a lot of money into our donation box as well. And you call your friends from overseas to come back to vote. And you call everyone to go back to their kampong to vote. And you queue up on 9 of May. The next day on the 10th of May, the international media says this. Malaysia is the beacon of light for democracy in Asia. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, my last message to you is this. We must continue to believe. When I first joined politics in my media statement, I now always think about when I first joined politics. In the media statement, I said this. All that is necessary I quote Edmund Burke, uh, something like that. All that is necessary for the triumph of evil is good men do nothing. Today, I want to tell you this. All that is necessary for the return of Najib, corruption and amno hegemony is Malaysians stop believing in change. All that is necessary for the return of Najib, corruption and Amno hegemony is Malaysians stop believing in change. You know what, what Najib wants you to do? Najib wants you to be disillusioned. Najib wants us to be discouraged. Najib wants us to stop believing that toppling Amno is impossible. Amno wants us to believe that we just go back to the old days and don't think about change anymore, don't think about clean governance anymore. Amno wants all of us to believe that our votes don't matter. Najib wants us to believe that our actions in the coming months and towards the next GE don't matter. Because he wants us to believe that it is impossible to topple him. And when we believe that, that will happen. So, I hope, just like what you choose to believe in 2008 and when nobody else believed, you chose to believe and you made political tsunami happen in 2008. I hope once again, people of Petaling Jaya, even at this lowest point of Pakatan Harapan, you will continue to believe that change is possible. That Malaysia deserves a corruption-free future. That your kids and your grandchildren do not need to migrate. And here is the land of opportunities for them to fulfill their dream and potential. Do you believe that? I really, really hope that we can. A lot of people want us to believe all politicians are the same. The media will say all politicians are the same. We are not the same. Look at Masabu when he was defence minister. He did not have contract that make 
that have a submarine that cannot sink. He did not have a contract, that helicopter that never arrived. Look at Anthony Lowe. He worked, all, worked very hard to reduce the price of the air tickets in festive season. Compare him to Wee Kassiong today. I can say 100% Anthony Lowe is a much better transport minister than Wee Kassiong. So don't believe. We may not be perfect, but I can be assured. I can assure you today that Pakatan Harapan will be a better government than Amno Barisan National. I want to end with this story. When I decided to go to Bakri, to Johor, uh, politicians are like that when they say they end, they end, they end. But this is really the end, end. When I decided to go to Johor and contest in the battleground state in Johor, in Bakri, an academician come to me and say, uh, uh, very, very out of the blue, he invited me for a drink. It's a he, but I cannot name her, him. Huh? It's a he. He invited me for a drink, very out of the blue. He tell me everything, da 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 da. He told me this. He said, Be in. Don't go to Johor. You all will never win GE 14. Uh, GE 14. 14, huh? GE 14. You all will never win. You stay in Selangor. You can be ex scholar. You got other opportunities. You got allocation. You stay in Selangor. Very comfortable. He told me this. He said, Don't go to Johor. Don't believe in change. All the analysis, uh, all the numbers tell us this, that you all will lose and Barisan National will win two-thirds. My reply to him is this. My reply to him is, do you know why you are in academic? I'm in politics. I am in politics so I can create numbers for you academic to analyse the number after the event happens. People of Taling Jaya, we can create numbers for the analyst to be pondered upon and analysed after GE 15. And we can do that. And I just want to encourage all of you to continue to care about politics and continue to make every effort we can to make sure that in GE 15, whether it is a few months from now or one year from now, that we will once again create numbers for the analysts to analyse after our victory. With that, I would like to thank you and I wish you a very good night.